You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Earlier this month, Gabriela Island was the scene of a home invasion that shocked the community and left it with a lot of questions. At approximately 12.30 a.m. on October 7th, local RCMP responded to a call that an individual had broken into the home of Eric and Sue Bolton, a local couple who have lived and farmed here since the 1940s. According to the RCMP, the intruder was armed with a weapon and was, quote, confronted by the homeowner. The Bolton's daughter later reported that the weapon was an ax and that it was her mother who confronted the male intruder in the front room of the house. According to the daughter, he then proceeded through the house, disabling the phone, smashing windows, and eventually setting a fire on the second floor. Sue Bolton was able to call 911 using a mobile phone, and police were able to get the couple out of the home safely. They have since charged 45-year-old Nathan McLeod with multiple offenses, including break and enter, arson, and two counts of possessing a weapon for a dangerous purpose. However, it was a statement from the RCMP released soon after the incident that raised eyebrows. In it, the local detachment commander, Corporal Jordan Mullen, said that, quote, this is not a targeted offense with no current risk to public safety. Residents who had heard that the intruder had been taken to hospital to be treated for injuries and then released were not reassured. The issue goes to the safety of the community, whether that is changing, and the need to balance the rights of those arrested with public concerns about crime. So I visited with Corporal Mullen at the local RCMP detachment to ask some questions, both about the incident and the legal process that followed, to try to shed some light on the matter. Here's our interview. Corporal Mullen, thank you very much for taking the time to do this, uh, to speak with me. Absolutely, thank you for having me. So I think many people on the island were shocked by the incident that occurred at Somerset Farm. Uh, and uh, had questions afterwards, and I'd just like to present some of those questions to you so that we can get information out to the community about that incident and what followed. So can you recap uh, the incident and what you found, or uh, the RCMP found, when they arrived uh, at Somerset Farm? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Gabriel RCMP received a call at 12.30 uh, a.m. on October 7th, uh, members were informed that there was an individual that um, broke into a residence uh, in the 2500 block of North Road, which is the Somerset Farms. Um, the information that we received was that the individual had a uh, weapon with them, uh, so police responded immediately. Uh, we arrived at the residence. We were able to get the two homeowners inside the house outside safely. Uh, fortunately, they were um, physically uninjured. Um, we got them out. Uh, we spoke to them uh, briefly to get a little bit more information. We learned that uh, the male was uh, upstairs, uh, which we cooperated on scene. Um, it was apparent that the individual um, may be under the influence of drugs. Um, while we were at the scene, we also smelt smoke and there's evidence to suggest that there was a fire. So after some time, we um, used de-escalation tactics to try and get him outside. Um, after a little bit, uh, he did come out. We were able to apprehend him. Um, the fire department by that time had shown up at the residence and they were able to extinguish the blaze uh, before it caused any more property damage. Now, I understand that the individual who has been named now, can you name him? Yeah, it's uh, uh, Nathan McLeod. All right. Uh, he was taken to Nanaimo Regional General Hospital with injuries. Is that correct? I can confirm they went to a hospital uh, uh -huh. with injuries. That's correct. Okay. Um, and I understand that he was then released from the hospital. Is that correct? Yeah. At, um, at some point, he was released from the hospital, or released from hospital staff. However, uh, he was taken into custody a short time later by uh, the Nanaimo RCMP. 
Um, now he had other unrelated matters before the courts, and he had uh, uh, warrants that he had to deal with for those for that file. So, uh, as a result, he was remanded over the weekend, over the long weekend, in custody for that matter. Uh, the the reason being is uh, we have we have issues um, for this file related to delays in getting him before a judge. So for our file, he was released um, due to concerns with getting him to before a judge or justice within that uh, 24 hour time period. So as a result, um, he was never released from the hospital. He was remanded in custody. It was, however, on another matter. So he went directly from hospital into detention, is that correct? That's correct. All right. Uh, and was he at any time released from that detention? Um, he went before the courts uh, after the long weekend on that matter. Uh, we were in contact with uh, um, the courts with respect to our investigation. And at that time, we were informed later on of his release. And we were able to compile our report of our thorough investigation. And we enacted our plan to uh, arrest him, and at which time he was uh, remanded in custody for our file. Right, so that period was before he was charged, is that correct? The, the period between when he was uh, in detention and you arrested him? We, yeah, we arrested him after he was released from the, the previous matter that he was remanded right. for. Right, I understand. Were there any conditions on his release at that time? At that time, there were uh, no conditions on his release. Um, that's why we had our package ready to go. Um, the courts were aware of our arrest plan, and uh, it was at that time that we um, quickly arrested him and brought him before the courts. In the first statement that you released about the matter, uh, the RCMP said this was not a targeted offence with no current risk to public safety. Can you tell me first what is meant by a targeted offence? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there was several investigational theories that uh, were at play and that we were considering. Um, based on all the information that we were able to obtain um, and was speaking with the homeowners and uh, Mr. McLeod, there was no indication that it was a, a targeted offence. It appeared completely random. All right. And can you tell me how it's determined whether a person taken into custody represents a risk to uh, public safety? Yeah, and there's, there's several things that go into that. But um, in this instance, uh, we were able to... Um, uh, get him off the island. He was not on Gabriel anymore, and uh, he was remanded in custody over the weekend. So at that point, um, there was no concern to Gabriel and didn't pose a, a risk to safety. Uh, so uh, this individual, Nathan McLeod, uh, has now been uh, charged and uh, is remanded into custody. Uh, can you tell me uh, what the charges are against him? Yeah, there's six charges that uh, have been approved and sworn in court. Uh, one of them is break and enter with intent, uh, mischief over 5,000, uh, possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose. Uh, there's two counts of that and uh, fail to comply with a probation order. Right, and do you know what that probation order was regarding? Yeah, it was in relation to a 2019 file out of Vancouver and um, one of his conditions on that probation order was not to possess weapons as defined by the criminal code. Right. So he was a known individual to you and to police in Vancouver as well? He, he was unknown to us here, mm -hmm. um, certainly known to the Lower Mainland in Vancouver. Right. You weren't aware of that Vancouver incident uh, until uh, after this one on the island, is that right? Yeah, there was no reason for us to be aware of it until after the fact. So, can you explain uh, the process that goes on between the time uh, he was released and the time you charged him and remanded him into custody? What happens in that period? Yeah, so, I mean, we did a very thorough investigation. Um, some of those investigational tasks uh, include statements and uh, gathering as much information as we can. Um, as we are aware, we have limited resources here, so some of those tasks can take some time. 
um, with our resources. So we spent the weekend compiling those, uh, that information, looking into his history and compiling uh, the best report to Crown Council as we can. So then we can present that to the courts and um, um, hopefully have him remanded in custody if the information that we have uh, supports that. Uh, somebody suggested to me that it's crucial that you kind of have your ducks in a row uh, in order to lay charges. Is, is that part of the uh, fastidiousness with which you approach it and, and the reason for the time you take? Yeah, absolutely. That was a consideration we had when we, we realized we weren't going to get him before a judge within that 24-hour time frame. So um, we wanted to compile the best report that we could and get our ducks in a row, as you said. So. Um, we had an opportunity to do that in this instance, so we took advantage of that, and I think that that assisted in uh, his successful, successful remand in custody. On another note, there's a perception among some Gabrielans that um, the island is a more dangerous place, a more dangerous community than in the past. Um, do you feel that so? No, I've, uh, I've lived here for over three years, I've worked here for over three years, and I believe it's a truly safe community. Um, we're not immune to crime, there is property offences, there are drugs here, uh, violent offences do occur. Um, typically those offences are targeted, and what I mean by that is they're known individuals amongst themselves. Um, now this this what makes this one so rare is that it was, um, again it can happen anywhere, but it, uh, it was random, or appears to be random, based on what um, information we received. Um, but, I mean, based on our statistics, there's no indication that uh, crime is on the rise. It's uh, been very stagnant for years. Um, there's police here available 24 hours a day. The police officers that come here are all experienced police officers, so they've been to smaller communities, bigger communities, and they have, uh, uh, investigationally, they're, they're very well-rounded when they come here. So. Um, I would say it's very safe, and I certainly feel safe living and working here. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Frank. Okay.